here, Colleen Adrian here. Um, when you're the highly sensitive parent of a sensitive child, one of the things that people don't tend to talk about very much, if at all, is the fact that um, something that can cause your anxiety or worry sometimes about your child is the fact that you can actually feel when they're disconnected from you, right? And sometimes that's what's causing their um, causing your anxiety about their behavior, uh, sometimes even more than the behavior itself, or at least it's another factor that's contributing. Um, so let me explain or maybe share something from my um, experience. This can be especially true with teens. And this is where I really realized it as I was reflecting on my own feelings when I was raising my uh, son through his teen years. Um, and especially when they get to the age where they start to make um, decisions for themselves to do things um, without your permission or maybe things that they want to do, but you'd prefer that they didn't do. And one of the things that I noticed was that if my son was at least still talking with me and connecting with me, perhaps even talking with me about his decision, but not always. But if he was, um, if I was feeling like he was connected with me and that I had his ear even a little bit, even if he was doing something that I felt like I had concerns about or I would have preferred that he wasn't doing, uh, there was something about that little bit of connection that helped me to feel that uh, it helped me to feel less anxious. And I think part of it was at least that I um, I had some degree of confidence that he might call me if he got into a situation that was too much for him. Um, but what I really realized is that it, we can feel when our kids are untethered from us completely, right? And off and out there on their own, doing their own thing. Um, without any regard for um, what we might prefer. Um, and I expect that all parents um, can feel this, like whether their kids are connected or not, but I expect that um, highly sensitive parents are just even more tuned into that and a little bit more prone to um, being anxious or worried about their kids uh, when, they come when they become disconnected. And likewise, your kids can also feel you and whether or not you're um, present with them, right? And you'll feel more present for them when you're actually regulated. So what that means is if you're overwhelmed or you're in a state of anxiety or fear or worry, um, that you may not be present with them in the same way. And I mean, in that really grounded, calm way of being able to kind of hold a big space for whatever they um, are tossing out at you, um, whether they have intense behavior that's related to something else or they're yelling at you or whatever. When you start to dissociate or are less present, they can actually feel that. And because they subconsciously, even though they don't realize they're doing it, really um, at, at a nervous system re level, they tend to reach out to you to, to get that anchoring and to feel that connection. Sometimes their behavior will actually escalate um, and it's totally subconscious on their part. And it's, again, it's their nervous system kind of reaching out, trying to connect, trying to use your nervous system to down-regulate and to come back into a regulated state themselves and feel safe, right? So... Um, I think that that happens, that can happen at any age. It certainly can happen in the teen years. And I think it's especially um, noticeable sometimes when kids are younger and they're having a tantrum, you know, and I've had parents um, come to me and tell me stories about, you know, their child screaming a lot. And I think um, sometimes, maybe not always, there's, you know, there's always situations where there's other contributing factors but in some cases, your child um, maybe, you know, almost it's almost like they're trying to reach you. And let me give you an example, actually, from my um, from my life. So when my son was young, I was having a particularly hard time, especially when he was younger, really staying present in my lower body and in my, um, you know, my pelvis and sacral area, my legs. Um, I still work on that, but it's not nearly like it was when he was young. 
And one of the things that he used to do um, when he was, you know, probably four or five or six years old is he used to go running through the kitchen. I'd be standing at the counter and he'd whack me on, on the sacral area and it drove me crazy. Right. Um, but if funny enough, I knew even at that time, it, I, I knew that that was an area in my body that I wasn't very present. And it almost felt like he was trying to kind of wake me up. Right. It's like, hello, right? Like he's trying to, um, yeah, trying to wake me up, trying to, um, trying to get more of my presence that, um, you know, I just wasn't capable of giving him at that time because I just wasn't present enough in my body despite my best um, intentions and my best efforts. So that is why it's important for you to keep practicing regulating your nervous system as best you can. There's no perfect, you know, and I've just shared with you, you know, it wasn't perfect when my son was young. It's still not perfect, but we practice and we get better and things shift and change and um, improve as we grow ourselves, right? So practice expanding your ability to hold a wide container for your kids when their energy is big. And that's whether they're a toddler having a tantrum or a school age kid um, struggling with something or a teenager who is um, it, you know frustrated with something that's going on in their life and stressed but maybe taking it out a little bit on you practice holding that really wide container for them um, because it helps them to down regulate as well um, it is a practice and if you find that you'd like some help um, you can do that through various types of healing work. The one that I found the most helpful, um, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I feel like somatic therapy is um, often very helpful for folks. It's been the most helpful for me. If you're curious about that, I'll put a link um, to my website below for more information. But either way, thanks for listening. And I'd love to hear from you. What actually tells you when you're interacting with your child that you're feeling connected to them or when you're not interacting with them? What in general tells you that you're feeling connected to your child? Is it something that you know in your head? Is it something you can feel somewhere in your body? And if so, where is that place in your body? Um, or what is, what is it that tells you that they are connected to you? And again, how do you know that? In your head, in your body? Um, I'd love to hear from it, you in the comments. Thanks for listening.